Welcome to a captivating journey into the untold stories of Mahatma Gandhi's life. Get ready to be inspired and amazed as we uncover the legends behind this iconic figure. Join us as we delve into the lesser known chapters of Gandhi's life, revealing his extraordinary courage, unwavering determination, and incredible impact on the world. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating content. Let's begin our quest to unlock the legends of Mahatma Gandhi together. As a teenager, Mohandas disliked Christianity because of the negative impressions he observed from Christians. He once overheard a Christian missionary near his high school abuse Hinduism and its gods. He would hear of cases where Hindus would convert to Christianity and on the day of baptism would have to eat meat and drink alcohol and afterward dress in European clothes. He believed that a religion that compelled one to eat beef, drink alcohol and deny his attire was not worthy and therefore developed a deep dislike for Christianity. His deeper understanding of the Christian religion began when he was practicing law in South Africa. In order to have more informed opinions about Christianity, he decided to study the Bible and the teachings of Jesus. After studying the life of Christ, Gandhi hoped to see Christians who lived up to these standards. While living with Christians in England, South Africa and India, he expected to experience unconditional love, forgiveness, willingness to sacrifice, etc. He tried to bring himself closer to the Christian spirit. To his dismay, Christians in his era never lived up to the standards preached by Christ in the Sermon on the Mount. The following incident exemplifies his unfortunate first attempts to experience the Christian spirit. After deciding to attend a church in South Africa, an Englishman stood in his way. Where do you think you're going, Kafir? The Englishman asked in an aggressive tone. Kafir is a derogatory term used by the British for a black person. Gandhi replied, I'd like to attend worship here. The elder snarled at him. There's no room for Kafirs in this church. Get out of here or I'll have my assistants throw you down the steps. This infamous incident was among many incidents that forced Gandhi never to consider being a Christian but rather adopt principles preached by Jesus Christ. During Gandhi's many contacts with Christian missionaries, he openly shared his honest opinions about the flaws of modern Christians. When the missionary E. Stanley Jones met with Gandhi and asked him, Mr. Gandhi, though you quote the words of Christ often, why do you appear to reject becoming his follower so adamantly? Gandhi answered, Oh, I accept Christ. I love Christ. It is just that many of you Christians are unlike Christ. If Christians lived according to Christ's teachings, as in the Bible, all of India would convert to Christianity. If Jesus were to come to earth again, he would disown many things being done in the name of Christianity, Gandhi once told another missionary. In a speech to women missionaries on the 28th of July 1925, he said, Although I am not a Christian, but a humble Bible student who approaches it with faith and reverence, I wish to respectfully place before you the essence of the Sermon on the Mount. There are thousands of men and women today who may not have heard about the Bible or Jesus, but have more faith and are more God-fearing than Christians who know the Bible and who talk of its Ten Commandments. Gandhi was in the Yeravada jail together with his mates, Sardar Vallav Bhai Patel and Mahadev Desai, and every morning they used to pray. After prayers, they would drink lemon and honey water. Boiling water would be poured on lemon juice and honey, and then they would wait for it to cool down. While waiting, Gandhi would cover the hot water with a cloth and read something. One day, Vallabhbhai asked him why he liked to cover his lemon and water. There are many tiny insects in the air and they might fall in the water. The cloth saves this from happening, replied Gandhi. On hearing this, Vallabhbhai, thinking of the Ahimsa law, remarked, this is too much about the Ahimsa. We cannot practice it to this extent. Gandhi replied with a smile, Well, Ahimsa cannot be practiced in this case, but how about cleanliness? When Mohandas was 16 years old, his father got critically ill and could not move from his bed. Every night Mohandas would massage his legs and stop only when his father asked him to do so or after he had fallen asleep. The physicians had already warned the family that his father had very little time left in the physical world. One night his father's brother came to visit. It was almost 11 p.m. and Mohandas was massaging his father's legs. His uncle offered to take Mohandas' place. The boy was glad. Kasturba was pregnant at the time, but Gandhi could not control his sexual urges. All he could think of 
was making love to Kasturba. Although his father was sick and it was a difficult time for everyone, Mohandas went straight to their bedroom to satisfy his lust. Soon they were disturbed by a knock at the door. It was the servant. Get up, he told Mohandas. What is the matter? Mohandas asked. Your father is no more, the servant replied. At that very moment, Gandhi felt like he had wronged his father greatly. He felt miserable and ashamed. He ran to his father's room thinking that his lust for Kastuba had blinded him and led him to separate from his father during his last moments. If only he had kept on massaging him, his father would have died in his arms. But instead, his uncle had the privilege of performing the last rites. His father had felt his time drawing closer and had asked for a pen and paper and written, Prepare for the last rites. Afterward, he took his gold necklace of Tulsi beads and put it aside. A moment after this, he passed away. That incident of not being by his father's side when death came to claim him haunted Gandhi forever. And ever since that moment, Gandhi fought to overcome his carnal desires within his marriage. It's important to recognize that Gandhi, despite his revered status, was not infallible. As a human being and a politician, he inevitably made mistakes. However, his positive contributions to society should also be acknowledged and celebrated. Therefore, our goal should not be to berate him, but to learn from his mistakes, internalize his wisdom, and try to make his principles a part of our everyday lives if possible. In doing so, we honor his legacy, keeping his spirit alive in our hearts and our actions. In the words of Mahatma Gandhi, in a gentle way, you can shake the world. So let's strive to do just that. Until next time, stay inspired and keep making a positive difference.